Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. So what I'm going to talk about with you today is some of my skincare, skin prep. I don't want to say skincare because I don't know anything about skincare, but skin prep secrets. So here's why I'm saying skin prep and not skincare. One, because I don't know much about skincare at all. All I know is that a good skin prep is one of the keys to amazing, amazing makeup. And throughout my time being a makeup artist, I've learned many things about how to kind of like cheat the system <laughs> when it comes to skin and making makeup look good on top of your skincare. So here's the deal, right? I've mentioned this a few times before. My skincare routine before I do makeup is completely different to my morning and evening skincare routine. My morning skincare routine is all about protecting my skin from the sun, um, making sure I don't age, so is my evening routine, kind of controlling my oil a little bit more. And my evening routine is more about moisturizing, hydrating, active ingredients, all this other stuff. However, my skincare routine before I do makeup, all completely different products. And it's about keeping in mind how my skin affects my makeup throughout the day and how my makeup sits on top of certain areas and certain textures on my skin. So for example, me personally, oil breaks down my makeup throughout the day because I'm extremely oily. Um, setting sprays don't work for me. I actually, um, don't really get on well with setting sprays on top of foundation, under foundation I do, but we'll get to that later. So skin prep is extremely important for me. So when I'm doing my makeup, my skin prep is about <laughs> absorbing all that potential oil because that's what breaks down my makeup when it comes through. We use oil-based makeup removers to take off makeup. My face oil does the same thing. It breaks everything down. I get all crusty and gross. And if you have drier skin, you may find that some areas off your skin grip to foundation in a really obvious way and you almost get like textured skin. So I'm going to run through a few things that we can do to kind of help combat those things. Anyway, just before we get into that today, hi, my name's Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life. And it's my goal to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who is really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, then please do consider subscribing. Let's do it. Let's start with the eye area, shall we? So listen, I know people don't like eye creams in skincare. Some people do, but some people don't see them as necessary. Here's the deal. I really, really like to use eye creams. I'll flash some of my favorites on, this, on the screen. I really like to use eye creams because I feel like they are just the perfect amount of moisture for around the eye area when they're a different texture. So for example, a gel eye cream, I really, really like. Just because it gives the right amount of slip to the lid. We don't want our eyelids to be too oily or too greasy when we're applying eye makeup because that can break down your eye makeup. So an eye cream or an eye gel for me is just perfect for under makeup. There are also ways you can use a gel-based eye cream or a gel texture eye cream in makeup that maybe you might not think is the best idea. Let's say for example, your foundation doesn't sit on your nose properly. This is a really great time to use a gel based eye cream. I don't know what it is. I don't know the science behind it. I don't know what's going on, but there's something about that texture on the nose that makes the smoothest application, but also helps grip a little bit more to your foundation. Give it a go. If you have any kind of texture or an area of makeup where the um, foundation doesn't sit, give this a go. I used to use this technique, right? If I, sometimes I would have clients that would come to me straight after getting their eyebrows waxed and want their makeup done. Now, if you've ever tried to do makeup on top of skin, which you absolutely shouldn't, by the way, you shouldn't get your eyebrows waxed the same day you get your makeup done, but some people do it. If you've ever tried to put makeup on top of a waxed area of skin, it just does not sit at all. So I would always use a gel-based eye cream to make a different texture. I don't know, if you are if you know why that would happen, let me know. It's just something I used to do all the time and always, always worked. I also find gel-based eye creams to be incredible on areas of skin that are a little bit more textured. So you have extremely dehydrated skin like myself. I have a really dry nose all around here. It's all dehydrated. You can look into my pores like this and just foundation just doesn't sit very nicely on those areas, some days more than others. So I always use, again, gel-based eye cream <laughs> in those areas, and it is a lifesaver. It works so well. This can also be done on areas that are extremely dry. So say you have crumbly skin, or maybe you have drier skin where the foundation just kind of really sits, almost like it's sitting in the crevices. That's a really great option. Another thing you can do with eye cream, it doesn't have to be gel-based, it can be anything else, is to mix it 
it with a little bit of eye primer. Now, this is a really great thing to do, again, if you have a really porous nose or you have areas of skin that are incredibly textured. Use, mix a little bit of your eye cream with a bit of eye primer. And I'm talking something that is flesh tone to you or something that is clear eye primer. And again, you get the most incredible slip and the most incredible um, texture to the skin. So talking about eyes, here's one thing that is an incredibly good tip for under eyes cracking. We all get really dehydrated under eyes. We get those lines under the eyes. It can look really dry. And this kind of comes from a place as well where we like to use a lot of powder under the eyes, which dries out. Under the eyes is so dry, you guys. Like it's extremely dry. And if you add dryness to dryness, you get crepiness and you get this, like everything just kind of, you know, there's a few things you can do in this um, sense. So, situation. So I've seen a lot, again, that people have been sending me messages of people using eye primer under their eyes and being like, does this work? I actually made a video about this about a two, a two years ago now, and it was a tip on how to stop creasing under your eyes. So if you find your under eyes aren't extremely dry, you can use eye primer underneath your eye. And I mean a very small amount. I wouldn't go using something like the e.l.f. Putty Primer. Anything too dry. For example, Urban Decay Priming Potion, the shade Eden in particular. So don't use anything too dry under there. You can use an eyeshadow primer that has is clear because they tend to be a little bit smoother. Or one that has more of a concealer texture even though I hate those on the top of the lid, because it's still a primer, but it's not gonna dry. Again, we don't wanna dry out under the eye. And this just kind of helps grip onto a product a little bit more and keep it in place. That's not my favorite technique for under the eyes. Yes, it may work on some people, and it is a, it is a good tip. However, one thing that I really, really like, if we think about it in a way of skin and how your skin is working, Creasing comes from dryness, it comes from texture, it comes from movement in the skin, but particularly under the eyes, it comes from dryness. So one thing I really, really like to use, this is the e.l.f. Nourishing Facial Oil. The smallest, smallest, smallest amount, I will drop a tiny bit on the back of my hand, I'll then touch my finger into that oil, and then my other finger, tap, 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 and then I'll gently push that product under the eye like this very gently, and I don't want to see a surface layer of oil. You wanna keep going until it's kind of absorbed, but also don't use enough or too much, sorry, of that oil that you're gonna get that slick and that kind of like oil slick to the skin. Oil slick, that oil slick isn't the right word to say that. You know what I mean, that oily kind of surface. And then you're hydrating under the eye. Keep that area hydrated. I know we like to use powder on top because we think shit is gonna crease, but if you just kept that area nice and plump and hydrated, it wouldn't crease, trust me, I promise you. I promise you. Maybe even mix in like a hydrating spray, not a setting spray, because again, setting sprays freeze product and it kind of gets that clay texture. Use like a hydrating mist to kind of like mix with the eye primer if you want to. That's worked more for me than trying to use an eye primer under the eye. Um, It's keeping that area hydrated. That's why I, I again, I would use a uh, eye cream under the eye if I'm doing a client. I always start with eyes first personal preference, it doesn't really matter. I just find sometimes you get fall down from product and I don't want to start the skin all over again. So I would use an eye cream under the eye and I'll let that sit while I do the eye makeup. If I do get fall out or drop out, you can literally use eye cream on a cotton pad or um, face brush and just wipe it away with eye cream that you're not interfering with the skincare. Same again with primer. So let's talk about our faces and kind of trying to keep foundation on the skin and prepping the skin for makeup. Now here's the thing, let's think about what kind of skin you have. And in makeup, we can make it very basic. In skincare, it's more than that, you know, but we can do oily, dry, and combination, and then oily and dehydrated, dry and slightly oily in some areas. You know, we can kind of um, be very, um, quick about our choices. We use this foundation, we use that foundation, we use that powder. Whereas in skincare, you probably need to go a little bit deeper than that. However, talking about skincare for prepping makeup, the key to having great skin and having like a bouncy skin, a bouncy skin texture and a really smooth texture without over hydrating, without under hydrating is serums. I like these ones from 4th Ray, like Colourpop's um, skincare thing. Um, I actually don't care when I'm... <laughs> <laughs> when I'm prepping the skin for makeup, I don't care if it's serums, brightening, whatever. As long as a person doesn't have a reaction to any of the ingredients, I use a really sensitive one, one that doesn't have too much active ingredients, doesn't have like, you know, retinols or AHAs, BHAs, just a hydrating one. I don't care what it does, as long as it hydrates. And it is the perfect amount of moisture 
on the skin. It absor it's absorbed quickly into the skin. It doesn't sit around and leave a layer on top of the skin. This is serums in general. I haven't had an issue with one serum. And it just leaves the most almost like pillowy kind of texture on the skin. One serum I really, really like in particular. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon, watermelon Glow. I can never say this word. Niacin nine and niacinamide dew drops incredible so so stunning on the skin these i would use without um makeup on top because it just leaves the most incredible shine and glow it doesn't look sweaty it doesn't look greasy it looks like healthy skin and again with all those benefits of a serum and, and what it does to the skin and how it looks under foundation and how it treats the skin but with that really nice glow to it so if you are extremely oily grab a serum and just use that before your makeup if you are extremely oily that and a bit of spf and you're all good if you're oily or dry, team up a serum with whatever other skincare you're going to use. Serums so under makeup are so, so amazing. So do try and incorporate one into your makeup routine. But ones from 4th Ray are really, really affordable. Um, and I think they come in a pack as well. Or you can buy them individually. So for something that you might potentially be using every day, they're a really good price point. Okay, let's talk face primers. Now, some people don't like primer or don't see them as necessary. Listen, people were priming their skin way back. If this isn't a new thing, ancient Rome was using primers, you know? <laughs> However, I do think that primers aren't always necessary, and I say this a lot in my video, so again, sorry for repetition, but primers really help the extremes of certain skin types. Extremely oily, extremely dry, extremely textured, extremely dehydrated. There is a primer is going to help to sort out the texture, not the problem, the texture. So for example, if you're extremely oily, a good mattifying primer or a setting spray before your foundation is one of the best things you can use. So let's start with the primers first. I personally don't like the oily skins. I know the kind of the two go together. Things like professional or those silicon based primers. I really don't like those for oily skin or for dry skin actually. I prefer to use them in patches in certain areas if I need to. For oily skins, I really like to use a good sticky Primer. Milk's Hydro Grip is a really good example of that. Or one of my favorites, the Elf Mint Melt Cool Cooling Face Primer. I have a few of these now because um, I don't know if they're limited edition or not, but they're the best primer I've used for a really long time. They have this kind of... Sticky sounds terrible because you don't want like a texture on your skin. It's weightless on the skin, but it does have a really nice tackiness to it. What I find works the best isn't a primer that gets into your pores or gets into your skin. I like a primer that creates a barrier. So as long as it smooths across the skin, that's what I like to use. Primer that makes that shield against your makeup is one of the best things you can do because it's not going to touch your skin texture. So a hydrate, dehydrated skin, pores around the nose, dry cheeks, um, fine lines, kind of fine lines, we want a shield, we want a barrier. So I know people are like, yeah, poor um, filling primers are really great. They can be great. One that I really like is the e.l.f. Putty Primer. This one's really great because it doesn't have that silicone texture to it. So look for that barrier, not that filling. I don't want to fill my pores. I don't want to create a silky, the worst texture on oily skin. And I don't know why the two go together is that silky silicone texture. So let's talk about setting sprays on the face before foundation. Here's why I really like products on the skin and prepping the skin. Setting sprays are fine. Like if you like using setting sprays, great, are over foundation. However, I like to use them, one before foundation to create a barrier and after as well, just to kind of almost like um, boost the makeup, a hydrating mist maybe. Okay, here's my demonstration. Okay, so let's say this is um, my skin, right? This is my foundation. So what ruins my makeup personally is my oil. My oil doesn't come through this way. It doesn't go through my foundation and then ruin my foundation. It comes out of my skin through here and then into my foundation and then breaks it down. If I'm putting a setting spray, if I'm, my hands are setting spray, if I'm then using a setting spray here, that's not the source of my problem. My oil can still get into the makeup and people are like, yeah, but it freezes your makeup. Not when my oil gets involved. Nothing can freeze my makeup when oil gets involved. So your setting spray is gonna sit right here, maybe can kind of like get in with your foundation, but that's it. 
my oil is going to come from this way and ruin my foundation. This is why I'm prepping my skin and not worrying so much about setting because what ruins my makeup is a, is my oil and the texture of my skin and you may find out with drier skin too. So that's why I like to create those barriers between my skin and the makeup. Setting spray I find is a really good way to do that. There's ones in particular that has have like mattifying sprays that have powder in them which are really great to use. Ofra have a really good one of that. Um, the Urban Decay All Night Spray or the D-Slick one is also a really great um, setting spray to use before your foundation. And I don't find it troubles the, the texture of foundation either. And then you can still use it on top if you feel the need to. Now here's something I don't think, um, people know it exists, but not a lot of people use them. I want to talk about lip primers. Lip primers are, I think, incredibly important to the surface of the lip. Again, whether or not it really grips onto your lip product is um, a conversation, but to smooth out the surface of a lip, my absolute favorite I've ever used is this one from Pony Effect. Lip primers are a product I really don't think people use enough. Just to get, again, that smooth surface, we, we want to smooth everything out, it can temporarily get rid of the lines in your lip. So that's all I have for you today. This was an extremely short video just because I wanted to run through some things with you. Give this video a big thumbs up if it helped you in any way at all and please do consider subscribing. Thank you so much again for joining me. Leave us some of your like hacks and skincare and makeup prep secrets below. I would love to read them and try a few. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you very soon. Bye.